this is the plaintiff, Sheila Newton. She says she was a tenant in good standing with the defendant, her landlord. And now that she's moved out, she's ripping her off. The woman owes her for security she's illegally withholding. This is America, where you fight for your rights in court. And that's just what she's doing today to get the $2,232 she's owed returned. This is the defendant, Claudette Dixon Shaw. She says the plaintiff shortchanged her on the last month's rent. Left the place a mess to boot, and she has every right keeping her money. The plaintiff's barking up the wrong tree if she thinks she's getting any money out of her today in court because the law is on her side. She's accused of taking advantage of a tenant. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she was a model tenant and she's getting ripped off. But the defendant says the plaintiff skipped out without paying rent and left the place a mess. It's the case of rip and run. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Sheila Newton, you are suing your former landlord, Claudette Dixon Shaw, for $2,232. The remainder of the security that she refuses to return to you. Tell me what happened. Um, I moved into Claudette's. Um, How long ago? I think it was like 2008 or nine. So you were there a good seven years? Yes. All right. The remainder of the security deposit, I should have gotten back 2,600. She gave me a check for 300 and some odd dollars. Okay, let's take a step back a second. Were you paying your full rent or was Section 8 helping you with the rent? Section 8 was helping. Okay, how much did you pay and how much did the government pay? I paid 277. 277? Yes. Okay. And the government paid 22 something. <clears throat> this was a four bedroom house? Yes. And who else lived there with you? Uh, me and my, I had a couple of children that How lived How many children there. originally did you have with you there? Uh, two. Okay. And my grandson. Okay. Uh, and then two of those children moved? Yes. There was so some... who was left at the end? Me and my grandson. Okay, so Section 8 then told you you can't have a four-bedroom house when it's you and your grandson. Yes. Okay, what is the day that you moved out? Uh, November 30th. All right, and in the month before, in October, Section 8 paid you October, correct? Yes, they did. All right, but then come November, what happened with Section 8? Miss Newton told, in the end of October, she told me that they said she could stay and they still paid the full amount of rent that they was paying before in November. Did you get that word from, action, from Section 8 themselves? I said to her, the letter that I have, state that, she, that they will pay $1,493 and the tenant will pay $1,357. For she November? Said, for November. Um, she said, no, they told her. I said, well, nobody spoke to me about it or sent me a letter. Okay. And so she stayed here until November. When November came around, um, she realized, I realized that it was only, their portion was in the account and it was less it was for the letter that okay I so had. for the month of november they paid the reduced amount they said right, they'd pay correct and then she became responsible for how much one thousand what one thousand three hundred fifty seven dollars all right so you end up keeping you end up paying seven hundred dollars i called her first to okay tell, tell me her. about the conversation you had with her i spoke to her and i said i can't afford to pay that much she said can you pay me seven hundred by the 15th and i said okay i'll get the 700 and that's what I did. I paid her the 700, not aware that she still was gonna want the six something. Why would you feel that she was gonna waive the additional 600 and something? Because I told her I couldn't afford it, I will move out. I know, but just fifth. because you say you can't afford something doesn't mean that the other person can afford to pay for it for you. Yeah. So for how you describe the conversation doesn't sound like she was agreeing to waive the 600. Because How I much didn't... was the security deposit? It was 2,600? Yes. That, is that correct? correct? Yes. Okay, so everybody's in agreement on that. And of the 2,600, you kept how much for the remaining portion of the rent for November? I was six, six something from that. Can someone give me accurate numbers? Yeah. 657. Okay. Yeah. 657, yes. thank yes. you. Correct. All right, and then what did you keep the rest of her money for? Because there's a substantial amount of money there. So if a tenant just can't afford it, is that grounds for breaking a lease? I think it's truly up to the landlord, but it's still a legal contract. So legal contract? I believe they should be able to break it. Okay, well, you're too much of a softie. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom.
On the lease that she have, she's supposed to maintain the property, like, you know, clean, leave, remove the snow and everything. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, after she moved out, went there, and it was really a mess. The house needed to clean. It was really filthy, especially the kitchen and the bathroom downstairs. There was a hole in the wall in the, in the front porch. I need pictures of everything <coughs> that you're complaining about that you feel would entitle <coughs> you to keep $1,900. So go ahead. Okay, so we had to get a cleaning service to come in and clean, clean up the house. How much was the cleaning service? It was um, five, 500 Show me proof that yes, you paid yes, $500 for yes, a cleaning service. What is it, that right there? That's what, I guess, it was a hole in the wall that she, that she kind of patched. Right, but somebody kind of repaired over. it in this yeah, picture? Yeah, patch over it. Yes, yes the patch over, this is yes. your patch over or her patch over? Her patch over. I got it. There's a shopping cart with some items. I don't know what that's about. There's a bunch of junk. Um, what are all the, what is this a picture of? That was the leave that we had, that they had to clean up and Okay, to so this them. is a picture after the work was done. All right, do you have uh, proof of what you paid for the leaves? And then someone, I guess, was drawing on the walls? No, that's the ceiling fan. Oh, yeah, someone was drawing on the ceiling fan? That's fans? what she said. No, but how is there a crayon or there. marker on the ceiling fan? It was there. I don't know. Well, how she did it said. get there? You don't know? I'm you? not sure if it was there when I moved in, but... Well, she's not going to take a perfectly good ceiling fan and mark it. I mean... I mean, Because it looks good. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, that would be odd, I suppose. What are these? Because... That's, that, I, that's what the... Um, so they're moving off the, the garbage in the yard. No, so what, what are done? these? These are receipts that you can buy at Walgreens or wherever. And then these are the originals. So you didn't hand these to anybody. We'll just make copies and send to her. Okay, who did you pay to do this? Um, well, Mr. Marshall. Who? Mr. Marshall. Who is Mr. Marshall? This gentleman that we asked to, to move the stuff for us. Okay, so even looking at the three things you've handed me, it's still not $1,900, so why are you keeping the rest of the money? That was... Oh, here's a $1,300 yes. bill for what? Painting <clears throat> the whole house? I mean, she no. lived there seven years. You know some of this is wear and tear. Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, it's not like she came and went in six months. It's yes, seven years of a family of four living there? Yes, ma'am. We, okay. we did not charge her for the whole $1,300. We charged her $600 because of the, um, the hole in the wall and, and, the, and part of the painting. We did not charge her for everything. And, and we had to change, we had to charge her $100 for the locks. Why? That, because we gave her a set of keys. We only got back one single key. So what? She lived there seven years. Tons of people got that key and could have made copies. Why would you ever rent it to the next person without changing the locks? That's a cost of doing business. That she doesn't have to pay that. What else? That's okay. All right. Having. Got it. And and the rent or part of the rent? Oh no. It? Oh yeah. 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 Or part of the rent. Your Honor, the receipts for the leave removal and stuff. Mm -hmm. And when I got them, I asked Leroy, who was Mr. Marshall. He stated that's her husband. So she had her Is husband. Is Mr. Marshall right? your husband? The yeah. receipts. Oh, you didn't tell me that little part. I asked you who Mr. Marshall was, and your answer was that it was somebody who, thank you, <laughs> that it was somebody who does the yard. You think it might have been important for me to know that it's your husband? Okay. Based on what I'm looking at, I'm going to allow you to keep a portion of the security deposit for the damages that include the debris, the cleaning, the yard, um, not in the amounts that you're asking for, but the debris, the cleaning, the yard, and certainly the rent. And I'm going to order you to return a portion of the security deposit back to the plaintiff, and that's $1,000 verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. Okay, uh, let me say it one more time. Uh, being short of cash is never, ever, ever justification for breaking a contract. <laughs>